So I'll be talking about uh, modeling cumulus convection over the eastern escarpment of South Africa. And one of the first questions that we might ask is why the eastern escarpment? And one of the reasons is um, generally modeling, um, models generally struggle over very steep topography with regards to rainfall simulations. Um, Generally, over the eastern escarpment of South Africa, the elevation is between one and 2,000 meters, but when we go into Lesotho, we find uh, steeper peaks that go up to about three kilometers, which is very high. Um, so these steep, in South Africa, these steep gradients that we find um, induces steep gradients in, a, in our climate, which uh, requires space, which requires space, um, sorry, which requires um, special consideration when you design a, a climate simulation. So after that, we have to look at the, the type of systems that influence our weather over the eastern escarpment of South Africa. And one of the predominant systems that we would find and we, that we would look at, especially over the eastern escarpment, is the orographic induced convection because the, the topography is so steep in the area. And what, what would happen with, uh, in, in this case, is that we would have warm air coming in from the ocean, and as it is pushed up to a mountain, um, the air is cooled rapidly, and the, the water condenses, and it forms your clouds, and then you get your rainfall. And normally associated with, with this is forest that we can see in the regions of um, steep topography. Another system that we normally see more, which is more frequent on the high felt, is organized thunderstorms. And uh, convective rainfall in South Africa um, occurs as a result of different things acting together. For example, we have cl uh, cloud dynamics, cloud microphysical processes, mesoscale forcings, the diurnal heating and the synoptic scale conditions. And all this feeds into um, how we model the, uh, the convective rainfall. And with regards to what modeling has been done already, we have regional climate models. And since, well, since from a couple of years ago, I mean, we've, we've downscaled models from 200 kilometers at a resolution, at a uh, horizontal resolution from 200 kilometers to 50 kilometers. And with the 200 kilometer runs, we, we tend to see that models tend to overestimate rainfall quite severely over steep topography. When we used models um, with a range, with, with a resolution of 50 to 60 kilometers, um, the models start to capture um, the, the cumulus convection, convection much better. And as a result of that, the overestimation that we find is not as severe. Um, in a study that we see here, the, the study is called Cordex, and this is a global study where, where um, different countries participate in doing simulations over their region, and this feeds into a whole global assessment. Um, they, they use something like 12 models, and this is a, basically an ensemble of the 12 models which also show that the Eastern Escarpment um, creates some problems with regards to um, simulating rainfall. So this becomes the question, why not go to high resolutions? And this is what we've done. At the CSR, we used a model called CCAM, which is the Conformal Cubic Grip Atmospheric Model. And we've run simulations for this model for this model at one kilometer. But because it is so computation, computationally expensive to run these models at such high resolutions, we can only run them over very small domains. And over our region in South Africa, we've done a couple of studies where we've modeled, um, we've modeled carbon dioxide transport over the, over the Cape Peninsula. We've modeled land atmosphere feedbacks into the Kruger National Park. And with regards to this study, we've modeled the grain degree days of grapes in the, in the Western Cape. 
So, and of particular interest with regards to modeling is that to get the amplitude and the phase um, correct, because we, we have seen in models that um, when we talk about the diurnal cycle is that the models often peak rainfall too early during the day, as in this case, or in some cases um, too late during the day, which is a, a fairly big problem. Um, the amplitude and the phase offers a good check for model parameterization and for the, repre the representation of land as atmosphere feedbacks. So in lots of studies, um, the phase and the timing is a very big problem with regards to models. And the aims of this study, because we're running a larger area over the eastern escarpment of South Africa, we're going to, we, we did eight kilometer um, simulations over the eastern escarpment of South Africa as a result of the bigger domain. And um, we also wanted to test the model for robustness um, and trying to simulate the diurnal cycle in rainfall. So the, the methodology, methodology, methodology that we used is uh, we used, as previously mentioned, CCAM. And this is a model that comes from Australia. It's designed and developed in Australia by, uh, yeah, by a group called CSIRO. Um, it's a Q-based global model. And it includes a wide range of um, physical parameterizations. Um, now, the advantage of using a model like this is that it can be run in different configurations. In the one configuration, the model can be run globally at 200 kilometers, as you can see in that one as well. There's also 200 kilometers, and if you need, it can be set up um, to zoom in on a specific area, for example that, and you ha can do you downscale it to 50 kilometers, or you can even zoom in further to 50 kilometers, uh, 8 kilometer simulations, and into one kilometer. So it's very flexible. So how we set up, um, <coughs> excuse me. So how we set up the whole methodology with regards to the simulations is we used error reanalysis data to force the model. This data is observed data that we get from the ECMWF, which is the European Center for Medium Range Weather Forecasting. Uh, we got the data from them. It is six hourly data. And the, these, this data is at a resolution of 200 kilometers. And we downscaled it, downscaled it to eight kilometers. So we use this data, the error reanalysis data, basically to force our model, which is the, to force CCAM. So within the error reanalysis data, we have sea ice. So sea cam is forced with sea ice at the boundary with sea surface temperatures. And when we move into the atmosphere, sea cam is also forced with these conditions from 900 hectopascal upwards um, using a digital filter to preserve large scale um, synoptic patterns that we find in error. So the simulations that we did was for 1979 to 2005. It was downscaled to 8 kilometers over Lesotho, over a domain of about 1,300 by 1,300 um, uh, no, kilometers. OK, and obviously, if you do this, you have to verify the data. So the data was verified against a station rainfall data, which is a, a crew. Um, it is rain rainfall based gauge data and there's another data set which is a tropical rainfall measurement mission trim data which is satellite data and then we use south african weather service data hourly and daily data and then another data set that we used is a normalized difference vegetation index and i'll get into that later why we use a vegetation index as um, verification so upon first analysis with regards to rainfall, I see the lights are not very clear there. So the whole Lesotho boundary is there. And all these stations that you see is outside of Lesotho. So it's still in South Africa. And those are the South African rainfall, uh, the, the South African Weather Service station data. And what this shows, this is annuals, the annual rainfall, seasonal rainfall, and monthly rainfall. And the, the picture to get from this is 
everywhere on the northeastern side of the escarpment, um, our model um, overestimates rainfall by a factor or two or more, which uh, tells you something about the difficulty of, of simulating rainfall over the region. And this is what all these darker blocks mean. It is where the model overestimates, overestimates two times or more. So over the rest of the region, the model does fairly well in capturing all the rainfall patterns and amounts. So what we wanted to do further, this is a simulation from CCAM, an eight kilometer simulation over the region. And you can see that the model, this is rainfall that it was simulated. So it captures the severe um, rainfall over the eastern escarpment as well as some features there. And one of the features that we'll discuss soon is right here in the city also catches a, a feature where that we can't really verify with any South African weather service data and so on. So for interest's sake, we decided to do a vertical cross section right there to see where exactly is it that the model overestimates rainfall with regards to the topography. And we saw that with the orographic induced storms it normally pushes up against the mountains and this is exactly what we see here is that in the vicinity here the model overestimates rainfall. This is the mount and the model overestimates rainfall greatly in this region and as well as on the um, western side of the escarpment. So here is a, a bias, a rainfall bias showing a very strong bias over the north, northeastern parts of South Africa. This is a, a bias with uh, it is where the simulation was subtracted from the trim data. And this is a simulation where uh, this is a, a figure showing where the simulation was subtracted from crew. Also, this one also shows a very um, sharp overestimation of rainfall over the north northeastern side of the escarpment, whereas the rest of the figure over the rest of the eastern escarpment, the model does fairly well. And this was for uh, DJF, which, which is our summer rainfall um, time. So for, for interest's sake, we chose January because this is the time of year when, when South Africa receives its most rainfall in the northern northeastern parts. And we chose this. Well, it were, in January, we see the pronouns rainfall features within the city. And this is why I'm showing you this one, because now we see this feature again within the city. And now we can't really verify that. And the reason for this is even though we have trim data, which is satellite data, it is known from previous research that trim data generally struggles over steep topography. So there's also a type of overestimation within the trim data. So it's hard to verify or use that as a form of truth. And with regards to the crew data, which is gauge data, is that we don't have any gauges over the situ. So that also creates a problem. So this forced us, well, not really forced, this um, led us to verifying the rainfall um, using normalized differential vegetation index. Because we know, and from previous research, it is shown that um, vegetation is very strongly cor correlated to rainfall. And, uh, and this is what we can see in, in this image. This is a NDVI image that, again, is Lesotho. And the darker green you see is the denser vegetation we would have. And for example, over the north, northeastern parts, we know in South Africa, we have lot, lots of uh, woods and uh, forests there. Um, so, so this put us, um, we, we see in this whole red circle here, we see that there's denser vegetation over this region, region which encourages us when we see this kind of um, simulation run where the model picks up, um, well, where it simulates more rainfall over this region. So it's very good in terms of, um, in terms of that we have a model that can simulate rainfall where we don't necessarily have the, um, any data to test it at because we know that in the no, no, more northern countries in Africa, there's very, very few station data. So 
this, like I said, this encourages us a lot with terms to how good the model does with, terms in, well, with, with regards to the spatial, attribu the spatial attributes of the model and the amount of rainfall that it um, forecasts. So this is now the diurnal cycle we test, which tests the robustness of the model. And once again, this is South African Weather Service data over different um, temporal scales. This is again annual, seasonal, and monthly scales for different stations. The stations are noted here. And then we have our CCAM simulated rainfall. And one of the issues that we see is that the model tends to um, simulate the rainfall later during the day when in fact it's actually supposed to be between 2 and 8 o'clock uh, during the day. So this is one of the things that we still need to figure out um, why the model actually, well, why the model does this, why it still gets the diurnal cycle wrong. Um, but we, but with, re, with regards to previous research, the model actually does pretty well um, with the diurnal cycle. This is a spatial map of the diurnal cycle. With the yellow, you can see the yellow time is between 8 and 2 in the morning. And the green, that you can, the green shading you can see there is between, uh, is between 2 o'clock and, and 8. So in conclusions, is, um, the CCAN captures the spatial and, and the temporal features very well, which um, we are very optimistic about and we're happy, very happy about. And it catches a well-defined west-east gradient in rainfall, which is shown to be, um, which is shown to be uh, a very important feature to capture with regards to rainfall over South Africa. And then the high-resolution spatial rainfall features over Lesotho is, is captured when we look at the NDVI data. But of concern is um, the overestimations in rainfall with regards to the northeastern parts of South Africa, where we have that very large overestimations. And of course, is the diurnal cycle and rainfall that is also still a bit problematic. So, for further investigation that we need is to, we have to look into the parameterization schemes that we use to sort out the diurnal cycle and maybe test it with different convection schemes and maybe use a smaller region and include one kilometer simulation to, um, to um, oh, sorry, how do I say this? Well, we need to include one kilometer simulations to explicitly uh, resolve convection over the eastern escarpment of South Africa. Thank you. Thank you, Zane.